Hey everyone, it's Nathan Orenstein with The No Show, here to talk about The Trial of the Chicago 7. The Trial of the Chicago 7 is written and directed by Aaron Sorkin and stars Sasha Baron Cohen, Eddie Redmayne, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Jeremy Strong, Mark Rylance, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Frank Langella, John Carroll Lynch, Alex Sharp, and even more people than that. Based on the title, it's pretty evident what this film's about. But if you're unfamiliar with who the Chicago 7 are, they were a group of anti-Vietnam War protesters who were charged with crossing state lines with the intention of inciting violence at the 1968 DNC in Chicago. The movie follows the ensuing trial, and it also contains flashbacks that kind of fill in the gaps in the narrative that provide context for the trial. And I'm just letting you know now, this is definitely not an unbiased film. The movie takes the side of the protesters from start to finish, and if you can't get behind that, then you're probably not going to enjoy this movie. I just wanted to give that disclaimer right off the bat. Anyway, let's continue with the review. Of the big list of names that I dropped at the beginning of this video, I think there's one that truly stands out, and that's Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin has been a notable writer for both television and film for the past 30 years, and the last decade especially, we really saw his resume grow. He wrote The Social Network in 2010, and that's unanimously considered to be one of the greatest written films of the past decade. He followed that up with Moneyball and Steve Jobs, which both feature his witty, fast-paced dialogue, along with the expected monologue here or there. The big development in Sorkin's career, though, came in 2017 when he both wrote and directed Molly's Game. To mixed results. The writing was still relatively strong, though not as good as his previous three films, but the direction didn't really do much to build on that screenplay. The Trial of the Chicago 7 is now the second film that he wrote and directed, and I have to say the results are much better than his previous effort. I suppose I should address the writing first, since that's where Aaron Sorkin likes to put a lot of his focus in. And I think The Trial of the Chicago 7 is written really well overall, though it's not without its problems. We still get Sorkin's trademark whiplash-inducing dialogue, though not to the same extent we normally do. This is for the most part a courtroom drama, and I think that Sorkin does a great job of kind of reigning in the energy in order to preserve that realism for a courtroom. Don't get me wrong, this is still a Hollywoodized script, but I think the combination of that Hollywood level of energy mixed with the realism of a trial really kind of meshes well here. Dialogue can get a bit tonally inconsistent, but it's not much of a detractor. The real problem I have with the script is that some aspects of the story kind of seem to lack focus. I guess I'll put it this way. What we get is really good, but I think the film overall could have improved if we got even more. This isn't a simple case of, oh, I like the movie so much I wish it was longer. No, this is, there are definitely some people and kind of aspects of the story that don't have that bright light shined on it, and I think the movie could have definitely improved if everything was more fleshed out. But, at the end of the day, The Trial of the Chicago 7 is an excellently written movie, and I really can't complain too much. In terms of direction, I really like what Aaron Sorkin did here. For one, it really feels like this movie has its own personality outside of the script. Molly's Game gave us a good screenplay, but kind of a basic movie on top of it. Fortunately, I cannot say the same thing about The Trial of the Chicago 7. I think the biggest contributor to this is actually Sorkin's use of flashbacks. I'm generally not too keen on flashbacks, especially when they're used as prevalently as they are here, but I think it really works. This movie flows impeccably between courtroom proceedings and flashbacks to give us the context. Normally when you see a lot of flashbacks, it kind of stops the momentum of the movie dead in its tracks because the rest of the narrative isn't moving forward and we're stuck in the past. On the other hand, here we have a trial moving forward, and then when we flash back, it actually moves forward the context for the trial. If that makes any sense, I don't know. I think it works really seamlessly here, and I think a lot of this is due to the editing and music as well, but just the overall use of flashbacks is much better than most other movies that utilize them. Overall, between the writing and the direction, the movie ends up being perfectly paced even though we're bouncing back between the present and the past. I will say that this direction style did lend itself to some tonally off moments, particularly using music, but they came at 
relatively inconsequential moments and definitely didn't do much to hamper the film as a whole. The last part of the trial of the Chicago 7 that I want to talk about is this monster of a cast. But strangely enough, I don't actually have too much I want to say about it. The cast overall is really strong, particularly with performances from Eddie Redmayne and Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, but aside from that, I don't have too much I feel the need to address. I suppose I will talk about Jeremy Strong and Sasha Baron Cohen since they do serve as kind of the comic relief hippies in this movie, I guess you could say. Jeremy Strong is my favorite performance here, and he is so funny, but he's hilarious in everything he's in, so this isn't out of the blue or anything. Sasha Baron Cohen, on the other hand, is kind of a, I don't know, a wild card, I guess you could say. He is a 49-year-old Englishman playing Abby Hoffman, who is a 32-year-old hippie from Massachusetts who went to college in California. This all makes for one of the most bizarre accents I guess I've ever heard, and I can't even label it as good or bad. I just think it's worth noting because some people will most likely be turned off by this accent, but I don't know. I didn't find it to be an issue or anything. That aside, though, I think the cast is really great. The Trial of the Chicago 7 is a historical courtroom drama that does an excellent job of kind of keeping things moving, keeping the ball rolling, while also providing almost all of the necessary context you need for the trial itself. It is certainly not a bipartisan film, but if you're expecting everything to be bipartisan, that's just not going to work out most of the time. I do wish we got some more development concerning certain aspects of the story, and I also wish we got a more complete and cohesive tone for the entire film, but I still really, really enjoyed what we have here. The Trial of the Chicago 7 is one of my favorite films of the year, and I think it's a very promising step for Aaron Sorkin in terms of his kind of forward momentum as a director. It's a great movie, and I'm going to be giving it an 8 out of 10. If you enjoyed the review, then feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And if you've seen The Trial of the Chicago 7 already, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. I've been Nathan Orenstein with The No Show. Thanks for watching.